Well, hi guys and girls, Emery again. Welcome back to the spare room. Time we got back into this little boiler. Uh, we called it Eugene, which is a cute name for a boiler, I think. That was actually decided by a popular vote on my Facebook page. Um, add me. Emma Ritson uh, on Facebook. Pretty cool. You get to see a lot of pictures, perhaps, that you don't see through the videos. But this is where we got up to. We soldered this this plate in, and I think that's all right. We've got these tubes in the top plate to go in. But before we do that, I thought, well, just today I might make some bushes. I've got some phosphor bronze. Um, 14 millimeter diameter this is good because you don't get cavitation like you do in brass the zinc seems to wash out of brass and and um, you end up with problems later on in the life of the boiler that you can't actually see so that's a bit scary so copper or, or, or phosphor bronze I've got some copper and I was thinking about using it, but this is this is not bad either, and I've got this piece and I found this piece. The bushes are pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna make two of these today, which are the water gauge bushes. Probably I'll make another one which is a little bit smaller for that one, and probably I'll make one the same for that. So let's make three. One for here, one for here, and one for here. These are going to need a jig and some some screws to hold it together. What I'm going to do is actually hold this in place with a couple of screws on a jig. Someone outside with a chainsaw, sorry. And so that they actually line up this way and this way. Um, so that when I screw the, the fittings in, the, the tube for the gauge glass actually just drops down through. That's the idea. This is what I've got. Um, it's 9.5, 3 8 to go in this hole, so we're just going to make them to fit this hole. And 14 mil, which is the diameter of that, less a little bit perhaps, to clean it up. And it's tapped through model engineer thread, which is 732 by 40. I don't know if you can see that. 732 by 40. These are only carbon steel taps. I bought them out of England. Uh, fairly useful little thread, no matter what Mr. Pete says. Uh, very, very fine. So good for steam fittings. And they come in odd sizes, so you're not compromising. The last engine, or the last board I built was for the Kenneth Wells engine, and Basically, I put metric through it, but it's way, way, way too coarse, and we really wasn't happy with it. So we're going to use the proper model engineer threads for this. So let's get in and do it. This is actually 14 millimeter, and I don't think it'll go through my headstock. I'm just going to grip them in the three jaw chuck, but I'm going to have to take a bit off here first. So I might just cut it off with a hacksaw and set it up in the chuck. So I'm a little bit annoyed. I actually made four bushes. They're all nice. They're all the same thickness and the same diameter. And I sort of wanted to show you how to make these, um, or how I make these, so that they're all the same. They don't really have to be the same, and that one and that one can be anything. But if you get them mixed up, um, well, that one and that one can be anything, because this one's a smaller diameter and there's only one like it. And this one goes in a different spot. But if you get these mixed up, and they're all a little bit different, you can pick the wrong two, and by the time you sold it, I mean it's too late, because there's not much you can do. So, I wanted to show you how to do this, and I shot some video, and I used my telephone to do it. But, for some reason, the file's corrupted, so I can't actually look at it. So, I'm going to do another one. Uh, the basic procedure for making these is to set them up 
and machine this to fit. the hole so that it sticks through a bit on the back and drill them and tap them and I use Phil's tap guide even which is really nice um, to run the tap through and part them off and when they're all parted off turn them around in the chuck so that they're up against the jaws face them all to the same level and just clean them all up so they're pretty straightforward and they didn't take long. They probably took me 20 minutes, half hour to make them. I'm not going to make new ones, but I do need a bush to go in here for the blowdown. And I need a little top hat bush about half inch high with a 516 32, which is that thread. A 516 32 thread in the top for the safety valve so at this point I guess that's what we need to make is that and, and the bush for the bottom so I'm just going to make a bush out of copper the piece of phosphor bronze I had isn't big enough for these because those holes are half inch or 12.7 or something and by the time they got a bit over them 14 mil is just just a fraction small I think um, it'd probably be all right but I don't like it much so I'm going to go to probably 16 or, or yeah, probably 16 millimeters and I'm going to tap it this size which is 51632 which is quite a quite a solid hole through the middle but that'll work for the blowdown valve because it's less likely to block up and it'll work for the safety valve because it'll let a bit of steam through so let's have a look over here at the lathe. So I've chucked this up in the fore jaw, not for any real reason. Um, this piece of bar is about an inch diameter and my three jaw chuck's only got about a seven eight hole through the middle. So rather than cut a short piece off and waste some bar, I've just used this chuck that's got to be a hole in it and, and chucked it up pretty, pretty uh, sort of roughly. So face that off, copper is probably one of the, the least fun metals to machine. Um, which is another really good reason to make them out of phosphor bronze. I have in my head for this bush is about 16 millimeters. It's not that critical. There's only there's only really one of them, so it's got to look nice and look like it belongs. But it doesn't have to match anything. So we might go to about 16 millimeters. The one of those old-fashioned tools that you don't see very much. Um, is a little pair of spring calipers. Now, this is great because it saves you a lot of time, especially if you're making more than one thing the same. You can set it up so that it's the right diameter. And you don't have to turn the machine off to check it. So, I'm not in a industrial sort of environment and I'm not making money at this but what I do have is that I'm very 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 conscious of how much time I spend here in the workshop there's really there we go there's there's really not enough time to be not making the most of, of the time that we have and all of us I mean we go through life we've all got this exact same problem life's too short and we've got it so spring calipers are the, the way to go here um, really good tool 
and just one of those little tricks for, for actually getting this so that it's a fairly quick process but copper's a bit of a cow as you've probably already worked out if you've never turned any before it's not much fun what we want is to make that so that it just fits on there nicely and we've still got a way to go we just want that to be a reasonable sort of a fit in there we're not taking very much off at a time so it won't take me all that long to get it down it's so close and there we go it's a fraction long at the back I think so I might take a facing cut and just clean that up nice take the uglies off don't run a piece of copper up against your finger because you will run into trouble when the machine's going like you'll, you'll cut your finger or you'll cut it off or you'll put a splinter in it or you'll take your hand off if it catches because copper's awful stuff to work see that that burrs on there and on anything else it'll just break straight off but it won't on there so next job is to run a centre drill in it now I've got this drill which is 7.2 the correct size is a size K and I don't have a set of leather drills be useful but and it'll probably happen one day but just at the moment it's not going to it's a brand new drill but even that's struggling a bit with this material so it is pretty hard to machine and not much fun probably a bit of metho would be the best thing but it's stinky and it, it right and it's kind of not that nice and try and live without it Next job is to tap it and I'm going to use I'm going to use Phil and Pierre's tap follow again. Big fan of this actually after I used it this morning this afternoon. I'll shift this so you can see what we're doing. So just spent an hour looking for a big tap wrench which was put away in the cupboard. And I've put the tap follow in here if anyone's never if no one's ever seen them in use. And a bit of spring pressure. And all of a sudden that's one hand that you don't need which is pretty amazing what a great thing the secret will be to wind this back out without breaking the tap makes that job just a little bit easier you might just run a bottoming tap in there as well there we go next job really we we'll talk a bit about this this is made by Phil, Phil This is made by Phil Desjardins in Canada and Pierre Baudry. They made quite a lot of these and I was given this at the Summer Bash. It's a beautiful tool, it's all hardened and ground and lapped and it's got really pretty texture on it, the hardened texture. It's got a, a cap screw in there and it's reversible. So we unscrew that and slip the spring out we have a look it's got a hollow in the other end so if you turn it round you can use a tap with a point on it so what a great thing a beautiful tool uh, thanks guys for, for thinking of me it's really nice thing anyway the phone went flat or oh, the cat anyway the camera went flat again just going to say thanks guys for this in case I didn't get it on camera the first time the only real job left is the part part this off and it's not going to be the world's most fun job but if we take it easy and use plenty of lubricant it should get easier as we go I need a new belt on this machine and it's on the list for things when I come back but we'll see how long we can put up with it there we go
a bit more painless than expected and that's what we got last job is to turn it around and face it off and if we've got more than one I just leave them all till last and then face them all off at the same setting and we might just run a tap through it by hand and clean it up a bit and we should have a good little bush so anyway there we go that's the bush basically I've just faced it off and run a tap through it to clean the thread up and give it a rub on a bit of wet and dry paper just to clean the, the burrs off so everything seats nice and that actually goes in the bottom that one so that goes in one of these holes here for the blow down valve it's soldered, it's soldered in that should be nice so there's our five bushes a uh, little bit of progress today not a whole lot of machining sorry guys and there's still one to go which goes in the top here which is actually the dome more or less the safety valve screws in top and it's got a it's got a um, an outlet for a pipe which is going to be some sort of steam dryer superheater and that'll go around and then back out the side here where this is this way up back out the side with the basically the the whistle valve and the the steam turret for the, for the engine so I hope that makes some sense a uh, little bit of progress these are soldered in about last so they'll go aside for a bit and next job I think is probably to make the steam dome and put all this together in the right spot down a little bit there so that everything lines up and works and silver solder the tubes in so thanks for watching guys and girls more soon don't forget to like and subscribe all that sort of thing say thank you to all my new subscribers I hope you find this a little bit interested even if you only stay around for a couple of videos and leave a comment click the like button share this video if you're even a little bit interested and be kind to each other so more soon